All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us during your lunchtime if you're based here in the UK. Uh, we've had a little bit of a break in August with our tag talks, but we're now starting up again this month. And you'll have noticed our timing is a little bit different because we have a very special guest with us today, tuning in all the way from Thailand. We're so excited to have you here um, and grateful that you can make the time on guard. Um, I just wanted to mention, as usual, we'll have a chance to ask questions at the very end. So please feel free to to turn on your videos and your mics and ask your questions directly. Um, I think on guard, you wanted this to be a little bit more interactive as well. So right. if, yeah, if, if, if any of you have any questions during the presentation, um, I would suggest to write them in the chat box just because we have about 18 people here, just don't want to make it too interruptive and too chaotic. So please ask them in the chat box and I can um, raise them during the talk. Um, so without wanting to waste any more time, I'll just get straight to it. Um, just a short introduction for On Guard. He currently runs his own practice in Chiang Mai as a principal of the firm On Guard Architects. He received a bachelor's degree in architecture from Cornell University in 1965 and a master's degree in urban studies from Yale University in 1967. Although On Guard's early work was influenced by the Swiss-born French architect Le Corbusier, his interests broadened by intense periods of unusual, um, of unusual investigation. The search specifically for historical source material eventually led to um, an a, um, unexpected but rich area of exploration that continues today, some 25 years later. Ongard's quest for classically imbued vernacular architecture found in such diverse places such as Italy, China, Nepal, and India has increasingly become his focus, and he has become known for finding links between different architectural traditions. Additionally, he's deeply aware of the local heritage architecture and its picturesque traditions so well known to visitors of Thailand, especially in Chiang Mai and the northern provinces. Such research and advocacy has helped bring recognition to the plight of traditional lana buildings and temples whose forms are so characteristic of Chiang Mai but which have fallen into disease and dis disrepair. Ankar is dedicated to the preservation and recreation of the atmosphere of the traditional city and his design work. Um, his latest misuse project, an urban infill planned around pedestrian streets and squares incorporates authentic vernacular elements to establish character, pride, and sense of place where historic architectural identity is nearly lost. Um, and he was also awarded the Richard H. Treehouse Prize in 2020. So a very warm welcome to you, On Guard. Um, I will pass it on over yeah. to you now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'll start with my uh, early 30 years of work. The first building on the left is the uh, Le Corbusier's influence on the, it's a classroom building which has the precedent from the um, French embassy in Brasilia. And on the right is the sales office, <clears throat> which um, again, it, it was inspired by form by John Heddock. And the lower three photographs are the the brick residential building and the Toshiba headquarters and the apartment building, those were done during the postmodern period. Uh, it's also during the postmodern, it's the gymnasium building for the school. So I was, I was playing with the classical idea a bit, which I didn't know enough about classical language. Oh, here's the, uh, we had the honor of being, designing the, one of the ugliest building in the world, actually. Um, this project was done long ago. It's just for three family houses in a very tight <coughs> site, excuse me. Um, it set up, as a very modern style building. And, but then I didn't 
it just didn't feel right. And eventually we came across this, uh, a house that um, in Granada. And so we kept the basic concept, but the, we arranged a plan. This is a house that, that inspired us, the, the Arab house in Granada by Carlos Gomez because it has a very elegant proportion, budget, human scale. I think because it's using all the natural material, the brick, the wood. And so with this inspiration, we changed the plan, but keep the concept, but, but we're using the courtyards to organize and diff, to separate the, the different units of the houses and create surprises. Um, as you can see from here, um, this is the main house, and this is another unit, and this is another unit. <clears throat> so this courtyard here is used to enter two units. And for this one, it ends up from the ground level. The, on the right is the stair going up to the courtyard that distribute two houses. This is the Gada Foundation. It's the <clears throat> foundation set up to uh, help the orphans that their parents were, uh, were killed because of AIDS back then. So actually, I'm, I'm very glad to, to be able to, to help doing this project because the budget is very tight and everything has to be functional, but the place has to be well ventilated and comfortable to live in. And, and the foundation is set up by this the German guy. And so it, eventually it, it, there are more than 10 houses that we did. Um, so we we did learn a lot by doing something that's very strict in budget, but but yet it's something that works. This is the hotel in Chiang Mai, north of Thai Bangkok. This this is the here's the site. Uh, there's a big tamarind tree. And beyond that, you can see very clearly the temple. Because of the <clears throat> Chiang Mai then, that was, this was 20, 20 years ago, um, somehow I felt that I have to search for the right direction, the, the modern style or, or the current trend just will not do because it's just a flash in the pan. It's something that will come and go fast. So I started to look for the traditional vernacular and eventually classical building of the of China, of Nepal, and within South Asia, mostly China and Nepal. And here's the section above the the the, the site is, is is tucked away, but it's in the cent center of the old town Chiang Mai. But it has all these big big trees, very beautiful site. But it's tucked away, so to most people, it's 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 not it's not a good site. But actually, when I found it, I thought it's, it's a great place to have a hotel. So it's away from the noise of the road, from the road and everything. And on the right is the some of the early sketches of the design concept. I was trying to do to make a, a village to to do something so that it looks like it just happened, it just grown like not architect design place, which is not difficult. It's not easy to do, <clears throat> and. <clears throat> Excuse me, because it's, 
it's the first time they really try to do a traditional building. This is the building under construction because again, the budget is not very large. Uh, so the, the roof structure, we use the light gauge steel for economy and the building is raised up because of the, the humidity of the north. And as you can see, there's so many, many big trees, beautiful trees. Um, because of the tight side and they want to put so many rooms, I, I was searching for precedent. And so I thought Nepal is a good place to start. I actually went there. I, I, I actually asked the contractors to stop work. And then I went to Nepal for a week because I think they're very, very good at doing something that looks grand, but actually very small in dimensions. This is just a gate, but but it just it has a human scale, even though it's it's not that big, but but it just it's something that that I think we can use it at the Tamil village hotel. Here's a courtyard that so this is basically a three building around the big tree, which uh, is something that we can learn from. And this is what we've been, this is what we do, we did actually at the Tamarin. Uh, on the upper left is the main courtyard with the big Tamarin tree and Oh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the people that work here, the workers, uh, actually, they're all farmers. There's only one guy, a foreman, who, who knows how to build. So he's the one who tells uh, some 30 people what to do every day. And these people, they don't, do not read drawings. And even my foreman, who is just very good, he doesn't read details. He, he just read basic plan like, dimension of the building and the basic, the height. And so uh, mostly it's, it's, it's all done by sketches and, and site supervision when I stay at site quite often. What, what you are seeing on the right, that's actually buildings are built from these rungs. Now on, on the upper left, you see, because the building steps down from two story to one story and then uh, it's being pulled forward. Actually, the lower building gives you the reason why, because there's a big tree, so the building has to step away. But, but actually this helps to make the building more, to give it more variety to the building. This is a, a typical building in Nepal where people who travel, they can stay overnight here. It, it's a very small scale if you look at the people. Uh, the guy standing there is only 1.5 1, 1. meter tall. So it's a tiny, tiny building, but, but I think it, it's kind of, it just has the right scale. It's very, very human. They, they, they're very, very good at giving human skill to the building. Probably because of the, the material that I use to break the wood and the carving helps a lot. This on the left is the drawing that they built from. It, it's, it's a dining pavilion for the hotel. Uh, in this case, it, it, it's, uh, it's the only building where we use the wood as, as the Structural material, you know, post and beam, it's all wood. Because I think people would sit here and for a long time for lunch and dinner. So to use steel would 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 be uh, inappropriate. It would be nice to have wood. This is a typical 
colonnade that's a, it's a transitional space between the room and the courtyard. The upper left drawing is the colonnade of a temple near near Chiang Mai, actually, it's 19th century temple. I thought it's a beautiful thing. And and the photograph of that temple is on the left. So on the right is our version of the that we built at the hotel as an entrance. As I said before, the site is tucked away. So this this become a, a, a sort of passage to the hotel and by curving it, so it creates a mystery. I think it's a, it works quite well. This is the, pretty much the building as built. Actually, this drawing was done after the building is finished. When, when we were building it, it's not like this. It's just bits and pieces of drawings that, uh, that I would sketch out and then walk over to have a Xerox at the Xerox store. And th th this was done after it was finished. This is the main courtyard. As you can see, we try to, to make the building and close the courtyard different. So it looks like it just happened. Um, you know, the, the, the profile are different, the height are different. Um, okay, next thing. Now, the, this is, a, I'm doing this hotel, Russian car, which, which is my own project, right after the Tamrin village that you just saw. Uh, the concept for this one is quite different. It's more formal. Um, the reason being that the site is um, it's an empty lot. It has no, no trees, actually the, the two trees, that's all. And unlike the tamarind, which uh, have more than 10 trees. <clears throat> so, the, so I was looking for precedent for the planning concept. And then finally, I, I found it at the Chinese residential courtyard houses. So basically, what you see on the left is the what that house in Beijing. Um, um, the, the, the red tone, that, that, that's where the open space is because I think the Chinese, uh, they are paying as much as attention in design the open space as design the building, which is uh, it's very admirable to do that. This is looking into the first courtyard of the hotel with the restaurant on the right. I want to show you this. This is my office. It's not a side office. It's an actual office that I I use in Chiang Mai. Um, well, it's not really an office because there are only myself and another another assistant. But I just intentionally put a shed roof over and there, there, there are no walls. Because I think when we were staying in Bangkok in an air-conditioned office, we are cut off from the nature and we don't realize that how awful it is when you have to be on the actual outdoor natural area. So th th this way here, I can feel the heat and humidity, and when it rains, I can hear it. And then, so I, by by designing in this so-called office, I'm more aware of, of the climate. It is really quite a change, uh, but but it it's it's a it's very good education for me. Finally, we built this building, the one on the on top, that, that becomes my house. So we built this first and finished it. And then, so I'm, I'm, I'm staying at the site seven days a week. And 
supervise the construction every day. Um, this, it was, first it was just one building and then eventually we built a duplicate of same design on the other side as a library and my own office. And, and that, that's the bottom picture. So it creates a courtyard. Um, actually, we're doing this drawing as a comparison, just to remind ourselves that what we are building is really very small if you compare it to buildings in the 16th century, like in Renaissance Italy. Um, back to the Rajman Car Hotel. This is the sequence of entrance. You go into a, you come in here into the first courtyard and then to the second, and then to the uh, guest room courtyards. There, there are different sizes, but they're the same proportion as you can see on the diagonal. They're, they're one to 1.6 proportionally. This is just a study that we made of the some of the timber building that we think is worth looking at. Again, here's here's a timber building that it when we visited it, it looks it looks very nice. So we took measurement. But, it just happened that they were scaffolding there and they were repairing it. So we were able to measure quite accurately. And then uh, I came back and redraw it and then and try to find um, what makes it nice. And it, it turns out, you know, it's it, it either the people in the old days that just have good eyes or they they're very knowledgeable about the proportion. So we use this exact proportion in our lobby building at the Rushman car. This is the what we built at Rushman car, the open air lobby. The structure is, is a duplication of the temple. Here's a swimming pool and the building at the end, which is a spa, it's a, I just simply took it from one of the temple building in Chiang Mai, in the old town Chiang Mai, actually. It's, um, that's the one on the top left. So basically I, I was, my idea was, I'm not, I try not to design, but actually just search for what's good, what Pew has done that looks good, and then just recreate them. The drawing on the right, upper right, that, that's the drawing of that uh, Shang Kong temple, that photo on the left, yeah. The, the little photograph with the guy standing there, that's my foreman. Uh, I just love the base of the, this building. So we went there with, the, with him, my foreman, and then a couple of workers, and then trace the outline of the building base and then that becomes our, our base for the Rashuka Hotel. That's the picture on the left with the drawing, the detail, detail drawing on the upper, uh, no, I'm sorry, the lower right. And so they're building it from there. And of course I was doing it when they're laying out the, the, the brickwork and it just readjusted by with my eyes. Uh, this is a, the complex of guess what my one story, except it terminates with a two-story building. And I wasn't sure whether because when I visited all the temples that one story, then Finally, I found one that has two story building, which is the one photograph on the upper right. So when I when I saw that, I, 
I think to myself, okay, we can do it because it has been done before. As I said, I don't want to do anything that hasn't been done before because from my experience, everything that I did or I thought I recreated something, it, it turns out awful after a few years. So what we're doing now is this, just recreate what is, has been done long, long time ago and it still look okay. So I think that's a safe way to design or undesign. This is the building from that courtyard. If you turn right from the previous photograph, you will be on axis with this pool. And this photograph was take, is taken from that uh, pavilion at the end of the pool, the spa pavilion. Again, it's uh, the drawing on the right, that's what they're building it from. It, it's very good actually that we don't get carried away by all this, you know, computer thing. It's, it's all it's all hand drawn. This is the dining room. I'm sorry, the dining building. This is the alfresco dining for the dining complex. Uh, again, it's drawn. Drawings on the left is. Is the work so called work drawings for the building? From above, I think it um, with the trees, it, it, it helps soften the rigidity of the plan. And I think people seem to enjoy walking through it and staying here. Now we go into a different scale. This is a urban infill, it's a commercial urban infill in a very prominent area of Chiang Mai. The, on the right, the square thing, that's, that's where the old town Chiang Mai is. And the bottom part is that that's where our project is located with the, the red roof. The white roof is, that's the awful existing parking structure, which eventually we managed to hide it. I'm, I'm just putting the Forbidden City on the left just to compare it. That in, in Beijing, there's a certain order to it, but in Chiang Mai, beyond the square of the old town, it's, it's uh, to put it mildly, it's, it's, it's a chaos actually, next thing. Uh, the building on the middle, that's the most important temple in Chiang Mai, the biggest temple actually. And it's actually the same size as the Bramante, so-called small building, Tempietto. And this, this three buildings are drawn on the same scale. So it's, it's something, maybe we're not doing it the right scale. Oh, this, this is a, just to show you how back in earlier 20th, 20th century or late 19th century, people in Chiang Mai still travel by elephant, using elephant as transportation. This is the, the first sketch plan of the uh, one Man commercial project. Um, The structure on the lower right is the, the market hall that I, I've seen it like maybe 30 years ago in, 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 in Southwest France in, in a town called Montpazia. And so we just took that and put that in, in the public square as, the, as an element in a public square. The photograph on the <clears throat> upper left and the lower left is the, the original, the, the actual market hall in France. And the one on the right and the drawings on the right, upper right is my sketch of the, my measurement of that market hall in France. It is all done in 
in TIG. So th this is it, it works it works well that it looks um, friendly. So we uh, again I use uh, Nepal as a inspiration and example to, to how to enclose the public space. This is probably the first public space for people in Thailand, because somehow we're not conscious about having a public space for people. At the corner of two streets for this project, we put up a tower, which is uh, similar to Leon Creer's uh, drawing of a house in Seaside, which I, I did show to him actually. Just a detail of, of, of some art that uh, done in brick, and it's very difficult to find people who know how to do brickwork and in art. So I had to actually bring people from Bangkok. Of course, here is uh, Bologna on the left, and 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 our version on the right, and this is a tall passage that connects from the main road to the public square, as you can see there. And then you can see a glimpse of the market hall. I was trying to create a maze of alley like they did at Flagenskang in, in, in Antwerp by Axel Wilwood, but um, I didn't succeed. Here's just to show you that what we do is, is to align the building with the street to create order, but yet have a variety. The picture on the right is a typical street, which it's, it's really a chaos. So what I think what we actually did is give it some sense of order, but yet have a variety, still have a variety. Again, this uh, rest area for, for people who travel on the right, it's just, it's just beautiful. So we attach that to our building at, at the one in one commercial project. Okay, this next project is a branch bank in Chinatown, Bangkok. This is what you see when you're in Chinatown, Bangkok. It's just amazing. You don't see a building, you see signs. And you see nothing because there are too many of them. So I, I actually, I took the ancient town gate as, as precedent. This is my early sketch with the, uh, the Chinese classical uh, bracket called Dao Gong. This is a building just to show you the context and the variety of buildings they have. And our, our building is, is quite simple compared to others. Again, the on the left is, is a, a Chinese, a typical Chinese archway gate. And on the right is our uh, bank. This photograph was taken during Chinese New Year in, in Bangkok. The detail of the bracket called Dao Gong. Um, we were lucky that when, when we were in Japan, near Kyoto, there's a, a museum, a carpentry museum. They just, have this full size of the the wooden bracket that we were building. And then they actually have a drawing on the floor. And so the museum was kind enough to let us trace the drawing on the floor. So the, you see two of my people actually tracing all the actual dimension of Dao Gong or, or, or the bracket and so we came back to Thailand and then we gave the contractor a new set of 
drawingsworld.com, which um, so it it's it's very genuine. It's 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 hundred percent correct. This is Japanese uh, temple, of course, and this is the interior of the branch band. I just, it just it was my inspiration. Okay, now we go to a resident. It's, um, it's for an artist who lives in Bangkok, so he comes here for weekends and vacation. And he, he likes the hotel, the, the restaurant at the Taran Village, which is this building. So he said he wants something similar to this. And so this is our, probably the, the, the earliest proposal to, to him. The the earlier photograph of the roof, that, that, that's, um, the roof in the south uh, south of China, which uh, I thought is very beautiful. This is a site. And you, you see the the red thing is the that's where the building are. It's, it's terracotta. It's a typical flat sheet of terracotta that's that I use all over in Chiang Mai, and the dark area that that's that's. Uh, the pond that we dig, there, there, there was a, a little pond here, but we just enlarged it and wrap it around the, our design. So, so the building seems to belong to the site. This is a view taken from the pond. This, this is a very large, House, a courtyard house in Bangkok. Uh, it's, it's in a very dense, uh, so called high end area because they're all high rises condominium and it, they're all very, the most expensive condominiums are located in this area. <clears throat> so we, we got inspiration from this, uh, they called Wang family house in Shanxi, China, this 17th century. There's they, just a series of courtyards. I think they said there are actually more than 100 courtyards in this whole complex. And on the up, on the lower part, there's our early sketches. This is just, we visited the area, then I, I just love the way space keep you know, compress and expand, and then the red light, sunlight's coming in. <clears throat> so there's a sunlight and then the semi-darkness, semi-shadow area. It just is architecturally, I think it's very, very rich. This is um, a little town in Suzhou. And then on the right, Alhambra. Just, just to show you the the power of this open space that's that's enclosed but not very wide but quite tall, it's it just very you feel secure. And again, this it's a very big site, has these big big trees, only one tree, this one. So we use this as 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 a starting point and as an entrance for, for guests, because the, the, the house is um, separate into three sections, one for private and the central, one for entertainment, and the, the one on the right side would be for his kids. We went to China at least three times to buy things. This pair of doors, the entrance door for when, when guests arrived, these are from China, we bought from China. This is just a view of the complex taken from the one of the condominium. Even though it's surrounded by the high rise, but because of the idea of using courtyards and then the trees in there, so you have privacy, they, they cannot see you 
the, and you can be walking in the courtyard and nobody sees you. And um, on the right, the, off the picture, that, that that the future area for for his kids. Yeah, again on the right, that that's the future house for the, his three kids, and on the left is the the house we did. You, you can see the context, the surroundings. It's, it's actually a big mess. So it's it's really an oasis within the this concrete jungle. This is the entrance, a private entrance for, for the owner. You know, driver would come in and drop off and he would go into this, the, you know, that's the door there. And, but actually this looks like it's on the ground, but, but actually if you look at the lower part, you actually go up the ramp. The building is raised up five meters from the street. Um, we couldn't decide how, how big a typical span for each unit should be, each pavilion. Should it be five meters or five and a half meters? So the client suggested that we build a mock-up. So we did build this mock-up. Uh, you know, with roof and everything, because the roof are all uh, custom made too, because we don't have a grayish roof, it's all red. And I, I want it to be this color. And so this was done in about a week and then the owner came to visit. And then the next day they just tear it down and, and start the, the actual building. Okay, this is the actual building. You see so many elements like the there are over hundred columns of teak columns that sits on a antique steel uh, stone base and, and these base are we bought it from China. That's that's on the right. The photographs taken from the market that we bought it from, and and many decorative things like on on the you know, on the, on the wall here, th th those carving, stone carving or antique. And we bought those too. And, and even this, this screen here. Yeah, the screen there is, uh, that's bought from China too, yeah. Just, a, <clears throat> just to give you some idea of typical courtyard. I, I just I just love this the it, it's so powerful and so down to earth and just simply beautiful is the building shine and on. on the right is a spirit house in, in Thailand you have to have a spirit house for the spirit to, to live. So we actually designed that too. Now we come to a, a hotel in south of Thailand, Phuket. Um, this project has been going on for more than 10 years because it got started and then, then stopped and then started again. And then with the COVID-19, it stopped again for two and something years. It's, it's restarting again next week, I think, yeah. Uh, just showing you the cookout of the old, which has a Chino Portuguese influence. Um, on the upper left, that's just our existing building, so called Chino Portuguese. There's the two buildings. This one, this is the main one, and then another one on the right. With the on the right, they extended. It was to one store and then they put another story in. So we took the two, the second story out and then add the left side to make it a symmetrical thing. This, this is what it will look like eventually with the main building act as a reception lobby and 
and the left and the right are, are restaurants for the hotel and for the public in general too. Here's a closer picture. And we add the, the wing building, which is, um, there'll be glass enclosed, but there, there's a series of columns. On the main building, we just took out the second floor to give the space a better proportion. And we use the Villa Cornaro of Andrew Palladio in, in Vicenza as, as inspiration. Uh, of course, we didn't quite get the proportion right, so it doesn't look half as good, but next time. The wing building with a series of columns, uh, it just, um, the inspiration is from the Palazzo Kirikati in, in, in Vicenza. This is the house under design development. The precedent for this house is the Literary Garden by Serge. Uh, it would look in Latin, sorry, Latin. Edwin Latin. Um, I, I, I like the way he, the procession, the way he comes in um, through this uh, gallery and then it opens out, as, as you come in, it opens out to a courtyard. Then you look on axis, you look throughout to the garden. Uh, as I said, this is this is ongoing project. Um, the sketch you see on the right, that's the very, very, very early sketches. Uh, we're using the the Putan motif for the opening which is a picture on the right, on the lower right. This is the later version plan with the, oops, with the pool. That's really, we're trying to, to bring the pool into the house. So we have the, this is the loggia that the pool, that comes intruded into the loggia. And also there's an open air pavilion for entertaining. Again, the water comes in right into the pavilion. And um, let's mix. The building, we put the building right up to the property on the street so that we have maximum space on the garden side because the garden is facing a pond, a big, big pond. So this way, it's, 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 um, you get privacy from the street because um, basically it's solid wall, except for window, the bedroom window, which is on the second story, which nobody sees it from the street. Um, back to this, um, now I think the the client asked for the, another pavilion, so we put it, there's an existing tree here, quite, quite large, so this building can be for when he has a guest, like, well, his parents come to visit quite regularly, so maybe they can stay here and have complete privacy and we have a, a stair going up to a roof with the pavilion and an open air terrace just to enjoy the house, the main house and enjoy the pond. Okay, this is the last uh, project I'm showing you. It's a Heiko Seaside Pavilion in China. It's, it's, it's right by the sea and 
the precedent here, of course, is the Erechtheum in, 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 at the Acropolis in Athens. The, the early sketch is that uh, we put the building diagonally on site and, and then we realized that we don't need to play around with that diagonal. So we just create this, the green part is, is the enclosing wall and you walk up the step ramp and and then actually now we have a the first courtyard and then from that there's a gate through that gate you see the the main exhibition building diagonally let's look at the model here here we have so you come up this step ramp and then come to this courtyard and and through that, you diagonally you you see the the main pavilion, and this pavilion has the view of the sea. Uh, hopefully, I hope this get built. I'm not quite sure. But <laughs> I think okay. I think that's about it. Um, Thank you so much, Angar. That was such a fantastic pre presentation. Um, I love the quote that you said uh, about how you try not to design and you try to just find what is good and, and recreate that. I think that's such a humble quote and not, not a quote you would hear many architects say today, I think. Um, also, what struck me is just the physical nature of your whole design process. The fact mm -hmm. that you're doing sketches, you're on site every day working at a one-to-one -one scale with your crafts, uh, craftsmen and your builders. Um, and also the fact that you choose to go to do some precedent research throughout the duration of construction. I think it's so different to what I'm used to currently doing in this country where I feel a lot of my time yeah. is spent managing risk making sure everything's on record, writing minutes. So um, such a breathtaking perspective. Um, I'm gonna open it up for questions now. Uh, I hope everyone has time for 15 minutes of Q&A. We did start a little bit later. Um, if I could ask maybe uh, Millie, if you could ask one of your questions, <laughs> that's all right. Sure. Hi, uh, um... Hi, on guard. Thank you, Diana. Um, let's just do the first one. Um, there's three, but I'll do one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, on guard. It looks like you've had a journey. So you've come from. Um, you've had progressions from Le Corbusier influenced. I, don't, I guess you could say modernism to postmodernism, and then to where you are now. So I'm interested to know: Would you go back and change anything? Would you have fast tracked past that, or uh, and gone straight into you know the the classical traditional space you're in, um, or you know was it all necessary? And I guess what I'm getting at with that is um, how would you train a new you? <laughs> uh, it it's very important to learn and know about what. Le Grousier did, of course, it's very important because he, he his work is based on the vernacular and the classical. But it, it, I, 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 I wish that I, that I start the vernacular and the classical a lot earlier than, than, than what I did, which was in 2000. But of course, I need to know his work and all the master of, of, of you know like uh, of Alto and all those people, but but I wish I didn't build any because everything that I built after a while to me it was the big mistakes. Of course, the biggest one is that elephant building. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I mean, you, so you, can't, much. you can't hide that; it's quite tall. <laughs> Cameron, um, I see that you're still in the room. Would you mind 
asking a question as well. Or maybe not. Oh, here we go. Hi, oh, yeah, I'm here. Um, okay, yeah, let me ask the question that I put on here. Okay, so um, we can all see a lot of influence from Europe, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, where the climates vary incredibly. Um, how do you apply that influence within the environment of Southeast Asia whilst making it, you know, obviously work within the local environment? I think basically if you have the loggia or the veranda all around it, that's pretty much solved the problem of the climate, the, the rain and the sun. So um, it's really not that difficult, I think. Well, not, not, not to me, but of course, I think um, I, I'm, I'm not a serious. Uh, so I use my instinct. It's, um, how do I explain it? Um, you, you're saying that because, because the Western would not apply it, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, for example, the UK, um, you know, it's in the UK, most, most of the battle is with keeping the cold out, right? And mm. uh, in Southeast Asia, the battle maybe is more with the heat, the humidity, the, um, you know, you, you appreciate the air much more than you do in the UK, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, like for, for the house that I said, I mentioned that I used the, so Edwin, Edwin Lutchens for, for, Precedent, because I'm, I'm using that this this is entrance, the, the the procession of the entrance, which is that part. Is the open the open open to the air to to the air part? I'm using that, but then on the garden side of his, I did not use because it it would not apply. It it's 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 for the English countryside, not not Thai. So i I'm, I'm using it. But um, I'm not using everything. Basic footprint, that's about it. And, and, and the basic circulation. Does that answer the question? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, Joseph, I see that you've got a question in here. Would you mind just um, asking it? Oh, sorry, Joseph, we can't hear you. That's right. Maybe I can I can ask it for you. No, I can't hear you. So just Joseph says, um, I would have to say this is the most impressive single portfolio I've seen. I've spent many months in Beijing due to my ancestry, so I can appreciate the source material. I love your scale comparison drawings. <laughs> I wouldn't say the work is classical, which controls all scale, but instead pre-classical, archaic, much more natural. In England, I would like to see much more projects taken from either medieval manor houses, which have a harmonious scale of units as a large house, or the monastic complexes seen in cities prior to industrialization. Do you know of Camilo Cite book, The Art of Building Cities? Yes, yes. That, that's a great, great book. <laughs> I learn a lot from that, yes. You know, the, the sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say that the, the I remember what, what Leon Creo was saying, that if you do a vernacular building, when, when the vernacular is really, really good, then it becomes classical. And I think that, that's, that's a good definition. Hmm. Um. I had a question of my own, actually. Um, I was just wondering, because your studies were mostly in the West, and at some point you have made the transition back to your home country, I just was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that transition um, back to Thailand. Did you find that transition particularly easy or difficult? I didn't know if you had previously worked for anyone else. 
prior to starting your own company or did you just dive straight into into your work? I think it was a good thing that I had a chance to study where I did the to school. But um, like I mentioned earlier, I need to know the work of Le Gouziers and all the great masters. But I just wish that I came to my sense earlier. And, and, and because I've made so many, so many mistakes in the last 30 years before I realized that I need a direction that's a, a stable one, which is the, I need an example that's, that's proven by time. And that's vernacular and classical. It, it took me a bit too long. I see. To adjust. Uh, Ali Reza, I think you have a question as well. Uh, yes. Um, well, just wanted to firstly thank Ongard for a wonderful presentation. I've always admired the work from a distance. Uh, I know my friend Lucien is also here. He's, he's observed it uh, from close up, and I hope to see some of your buildings. Um, I have seen with the questions that that uh, there is a kind of misperception, and I wonder what your take is on it. Because once you move out of Western European classicism and, and you do buildings which don't belong to a geographical limit of Europe, or even the United States, people somehow immediately think this is vernacular and there's nothing classical about it. And they start looking at classical orders in order to identify the buildings. I was wondering, how do you see your own buildings? In what tradition does it sit? For me, at least, I just want to declare my own hand. I think there are very many classicisms. There's not just one kind of singular classical ideal, which is mostly referred to as the kind of the Western European model. And the question again comes up in, in application of architecture to different territories. I think you or every architect basically takes the essence of an architecture and then transfer it. For instance, the question of climate suitability never comes up if you, trans, uh, if, if you transfer an architectural style from continental Europe to the United States. You know, nobody, nobody thinks that the United States climate is not suitable for any European architecture whereas it has probably the most varied climate than, than anywhere else in the world. So I was wondering what, what your take is on your place of your architecture within what we term as a general classical tradition. Well, uh, what I'm going to say is probably not going to sound good to the Thai view, but I think we are, <clears throat> we have to accept the fact that we are still a developing country and so uh, a strict classical building, Western classical building, just would not sit well. It just does not suit us. It would seem out of place. And, um, but th that, that's why I searched and I tried to study the classical Chinese architecture, like the, the wooden bracket that I showed you. You know, th th those things, somehow it just, it can easily fit in and it would, it doesn't seem out of place. Um, and also I, I think I, I, I don't really think that if we do a classical building, would, let's say if I do a, a Chinese classical building very correctly and everything, but but if I, we do it now, it just, uh, to, to, to me at least, it, it becomes a bit of a bore. You, you, you need to add some, some, how do I say it, a, a fresh, not ingredient, I don't, I don't know the word, but, but um, so it, it does not become boring. I, I, again, I'm not trying to make I think I mentioned earlier that that I like the Chinese, the fact that they pay as much attention to the outdoor space as the building themselves, which is very commendable. And it's something that um, 
many people in my country does did not does not realize that. <clears throat> um, does that answer your question at all? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I think we have time for one last question. Um, Lucien, I see you've got a couple of questions in the chat. Would you like to? Yeah, hello. Oh, hello, hello. I put on my hat to ask these questions. <laughs> hello to everybody. Hello, Anga, great. Uh, so yeah, I asked one question because I think we, I talked to, to you and Puris already, it's this kind of really strange ideas about and this polemics about cultural appropriation where people are almost really damned for taking inspiration, imitating, copying, stealing, interesting things which work in different places. And also I will like to go connect directly to my other question is that in an ecological, what the green architecture, ecological kind of you know, obsessions, which I understand because it's uh, really, you know, we are really in a in a very difficult situation. But in some way, when you look at vernacular architecture worldwide, you see that there are a lot of similar conditions. There are a lot of universal elements despite of climate changes. You always need cross ventilation. You need kind of light, and you need to protect either from heat or from air, and the way you're doing this is with kind of material systems, you do it with uh, kind of, you know, good details, you do it with uh, the, the type of food that, but it's not that it doesn't allow you to kind of use elements from Germany or from Italy and apply it or, and from China. And also having seen what, at least part of the work, fantastic work you have done and having lived there for 10, 10 days, I thought that I could recognize Bologna, but I knew that I was in Chiang Mai. So there's a, it's such an interesting way. It's not a collaging, it's not, it's really process. And when you say I'm imitating or I'm copying or I'm just recreating, it's true, but it always becomes something new. And I think, Mili, what you were, Mili, you were mentioning the, the new, the, the idea of the newness. So it's always kind of fresh and new and reinvented in some way. So I don't know if there's a question. <laughs> <Or just>, uh, <laughs> I'm sharing a thought with us. <laughs> oh, it's, a, uh, it's a reflection, let's say. Oh, by the way, you look good in a jacket. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> OK. Um, the climate is now really allowing jackets again here. Yeah. It's getting oh, cool, in, cool in Luxembourg, yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, you know, the I, I think I was thinking of an article I think you wrote that um, by imitating, you cannot, not exactly like this, but, but the content is like, by imitating, eventually you have to in, you invent without knowing it, but actually you have to invent that, that. That's that. I think that's what happened to my Bologna bracket thing. Um, I mean, I quote unquote copied it, of course, but then the way I did it somehow, uh, it's not quite the same because you cannot copy. It's not. It's difficult to copy. And by you, you have to accommodate somehow, and and so by by that, you actually invent. So the, so, so what 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 you said? I think I wrote I I read that long long time ago. It's it's very true, and and I've heard a lot of people in my country say that oh my work is nothing. You just I just copy things. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. Uh, so, but I don't pay attention to those uh, criticizing because they haven't tried. And so the thing is to copy is actually not easy. You know, like that house, the house that I 
copy or, or must be a better word, you know, that Sir Edward lodged themselves. I mean, I, I took the concept, but then in the end, you 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 cannot you cannot you almost don't recognize that it's from Dinary Garden. Right. You know, the, sorry, just one one comment, you know, it's not a question because you you were, you were quoting this Africa word on imitation, and I talk also about origin originality, mm -hmm. which is a concept which often traditional architecture don't want to address. So it really means going back to the origin, so understanding mm. where the forms come from, where the elements come from. So when you, as you say, you copy or imitate, it's really you going back and kind of to the original meaning of the, of the places and of the buildings, and then you kind of bring it back to a kind of fresh, a fresh situation. So in some way, it's going back to the origin to create something mm -hmm. new which kind of connects to you know mm -hmm. to the original concept mm -hmm. right right yeah so i think that's um all we have time for thank you so much again on guard for that fantastic thank presentation you. Thank you. huge round of applause to you <laughs> and thank you everyone for staying uh to the end as well this will be recorded and posted on our youtube page so if you ever want to go back and revisit on God's beautiful work, you can do that um, in the next few weeks. Um, so thank, thanks again. Our next Tag Talk is in a month's time on building craft, uh, which I think is a nice um, segue into that discussion following this presentation. Um, have a good evening on guard and a good rest of your day to everyone else. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>